currently based in Auckland, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I've been there for the last five years, and I'm the director of a small but growing center for translation studies and interpreting. Can you tell us a bit about the center and how it works in relation to modern languages, to language training perhaps? Right. Well, we're, we're part of a school of European languages and literatures, which is a bit misleading because most of our students are from Asian backgrounds. And we're only postgraduate. Uh, that is, we have two postgraduate programs, a fourth year program, a postgraduate diploma, and the fifth year program, master, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and we depend on the language departments to provide us the expertise in translation practice and, if needed, interpreting practice as well. Although we're trying to cover more and more from within the center, but with only three staff members, that's a bit tricky. So you're not doing language training at all? You're just on doing trans... What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, language training is part of the postgraduate diploma. That's on, if students come to us, for example, with a Bachelor in Languages, they get another uh, course, a fourth year course in French, Spanish, uh, German language acquisition. Um, again, delivered by the language departments. That's 25% of their degree, and the rest is delivered by us, and that's translation theory, uh, translation practice, and professional skills. So we've got four quarters, basically, in terms of the contents. Are you, are you doing translation technologies at all? Yes, we do. Okay. We have three uh, different courses kind of staggered, starting with, uh, with uh, terminology management, um, then moving on to translation memory systems and all the way to localization. And students have to go through these three uh, different types of courses um, along those lines, I'd say. And they can choose as part of a master or as a postgraduate diploma, or they can take individual courses as well. Okay. Uh, a lot of people would know you as the author of the book, uh, Electronic Tools for Translators, which has become a, a kind of reference textbook. Uh, can you tell us how you came to write that and if that's your area of, of special specialization within translation studies? I'll start with the second question first. Yes, yeah. it is one of my areas of specialization of interest, uh, but it's it's been a while since I read, uh, wrote this yes. book. Uh, I guess it was uh, something that... It was published 2001, but it was written mostly in 1999 and 2000. It came out of my own, my PhD, which covered the impact of new technologies on professional translation and translation, translator training. And I guess uh, at that time, there was a clear need for a more textbook-oriented approach to what I call electronic tools. I don't really like new technologies too much. Um, that was, I guess, the beginning, and I also noted my own teaching, starting in Heidelberg and then in Gammersheim, that there isn't anything out there in terms of a textbook. We should have noted that before going to New Zealand, you were in... Just in Germany, right? Well, Gammersheim, yes. and I did my PhD before that in Heidelberg, so it was, yeah. Okay, so you were trained in... Heidelberg. In Heidelberg. did my master and my PhD in Heidelberg. Yeah. Okay, and you went, you were working in the States for a while? I was studying in the mm -hmm. States um, as an undergrad, San Francisco, and then I went to the States as a Fulbright Scholar in 2001, but that was in American studies, so I, I moonlight as an Americanist in a way, uh, working on presidential discourse and discourse analysis, so I try to divide my research interests. That's why technology is no, no longer the main focus of my, my work, because uh, I, I shifted that more towards political discourse, political discourse analysis. analysis. Um, and I'm now trying to merge those two interests, translation and political discourse, by uh, looking at translation politics, mm -hmm. what's happening there, and also I'm working on a dictionary of American political terms, German English, because I noticed when looking at certain translations that they were just not not correct, they were just plain wrong and misleading, and, and painting a very different picture of a political reality that, you know, that, that isn't there. I was going to ask if you think the book on electronic tools should be updated, <laughs> yeah. but I suppose you want somebody else to do it. It should have been updated like seven years ago, of course, yeah. but a topic it's like that, so fast, things are changing sure. uh, rapidly. I'd love to update it. Um, but I just don't have the time. I do think the structure is still very much intact. I, th I don't think we really have to add a lot. I probably would kick the machine translation part out and leave that 
aside, and I probably would split it up and focus more on terminology, mm -hmm. management and mining, because I think that's actually where we need to go as, as, as individuals, as translators. Into, so into, into terminology problem. management, because for okay. me that's the ultimate knowledge tool. Um, while I, I see localization tools, translation memories more as productivity tools. It's not really going to help uh, us becoming better, more self-confident uh, writers. It might standardize okay. and our, our way of writing. It's going to definitely reduce uh, uh, a lot of errors because that's what standardization is about. But I don't think it's going to really make us better writers. I would probably say the, the opposite. That type well, of th there's a movement towards serviceable, low, medium quality translations. Mm -hmm. Through crowdsourcing, through database machine translation. Right. Uh, and the work on terminology seems to go against that. Looking for high quality work. I wouldn't say there it a goes chance? against that. I think I it's, know, it it's doing exactly the right thing, not accepting that, you know, lower medium quality is, is what we should be looking at, especially at individual freelance translators. But I mean, a lot of companies enough. these yes, days... Yes, well, well that's a different point of view. That's the company's point of view. I'm, okay. looking, I'm, I'm, I'm a translator myself, so I look... Uh, and I'm a writer myself, so I'm looking at, at, at uh, translation from that point of view, I'm from, from being able to, uh, to produce a text that I can identify with, be it as a writer or as a translator. I don't think there's a difference at all. There shouldn't be a difference at all. And of course, terminology will empower me more. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the tools will take away that empowerment. Again, it will at least try to. So I think we, we, we need to counterbalance that, that point of view that you can automize it and standardize everything. Um, and you know, this might be some research for the future to see if yes. there's really so much uh, benefit, financial benefit, in having that type of approach. Why not start out with, with the good translation right from the start, which you well, don't have to revise? Fees for translators in Spain have gone down for the past 10 years. I don't know in New Zealand or Germany. Yeah, pretty good still, Germany. Pretty Germany good. Still okay. Pretty stable. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's a, it's a definitely different market, right. different demand, different language combination as well. Um, I'm not really sure that has to be the case. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, it might be the specifics of Spanish with the Spanish Americas. Oh, and the competition has always been lower, but as well, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. In, in comparison, if um, you were beginning your doctorate tomorrow, <laughs> look, what kind of topics? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, start, uh, start really uh, thinking uh, hard about no, what kind to of do topics do you think we, we need research to be done on in this area? That's that's a that's a tricky question. I think yeah. uh, probably the topics that I can't even think about mm -hmm. probably would be the best. Uh, from my point of view, if you want to focus on technology as, as one area of research interest, I think we we could look at that type of knowledge tool idea and and see how how translators, how interpreters as well uh, use electronic tools and resources to optimize not only their understanding of a text but also uh, for the production of a target text. Okay. Uh, so but the cognitive issues. Going yeah. into cognitive science as, as yeah. a research direction. Yeah. That would be a good way to start with. Okay. Uh, but combine it with text analysis mm -hmm. and text production. Don't see. Don't look just at the documentation or the documentary research process. See, you know how people analyze the source text, for example. Uh, what consequences they draw from analyzing text, where their research needs are, how they go about that, and probably most importantly, what they what they do with that type of hopefully new knowledge or Good. found knowledge. That might be something. What about in Auckland? Uh, are you doing any research? Uh, is the centre in Auckland engaged in research at all? Yes, we, we have to do a lot of research, actually, but as I said earlier, and for me personally, I'm doing most of my work in, at the moment in American studies, political, political language, political translation. Um, we do have research on uh, translation processes, translation process research, but we're still a pretty small center. I have a couple of uh, PhD students who work more in political studies <laughs> and work in uh, psychological aspects of translation. It's quite interesting okay. as well. What, you know, what does technology do to us, for example? And you have a strong focus on Asian languages there, I, I would imagine. 
Well, in a way, we have to have because we get a lot of demand from that. We have uh, a lot of Chinese students, Korean, Japanese. These are three main languages together with uh, German and, and Spanish and French. Okay. So, uh, uh, Frank, you've gone from uh, Europe to uh, the end of the earth. Are you going to come back or are you going to stay in Auckland, do you think? Where, where is your future now? Oh, I'm always going to come back to Europe. But professionally, I mean, it's, it's a tough call. Um, I really like it in Auckland, so I'll have to wait and see, I guess. Okay. Good. We'll see you in Tanagona from time to time, at least. Thank you very well, much. Thanks for having me.